Hello, this is Dr. Grande. In today's video, I'll be going over nine myths about schizophrenia. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss any new videos. So when we talk about the mental disorder schizophrenia, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions out there about it and about other disorders which are similar, like schizoaffective disorder. So let's get started with myth number one. Myth number one about schizophrenia is that this mental disorder is rare. Actually, schizophrenia affects about 0.3 to 0.7% of the population. And if you count schizoaffective disorder as well, that affects another 0.3% of the population. So schizophrenia might not be as common as a number of other mental disorders, but it's by no means rare. Myth number two is that schizophrenia is the same thing as split personality. And I think this comes from the origin of the term schizophrenia, which means split mind. But actually schizophrenia really has nothing to do with split personality or split mind. When we think of multiple personalities, we think of another disorder called dissociative identity disorder. And the symptoms for that are really quite a bit different than the symptoms we see with schizophrenia. Myth number three is that schizophrenia is the same thing as severely and persistently mentally ill, or SPMI. Now it's true that there is some overlap between these two terms, but SPMI covers really the effects of mental disorders, not specifically any particular mental disorder. Although usually we think of SPMI as encompassing schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depressive disorder, and sometimes antisocial personality disorder. So someone who is categorized as severely and persistently mentally ill may have schizophrenia, but they also may have other mental disorders. So SPMI and schizophrenia aren't the same thing, but it's understandable why this myth exists. There is quite a bit of overlap, as I mentioned. Myth number four is that individuals with schizophrenia are violent. Now there is a slight increase in risk of violence associated with schizophrenia and also associated with a few other mental disorders like bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder. This isn't a dramatic increase in risk, just a slight risk. And we see more of the risk around the psychotic phase of these mental disorders. Schizophrenia certainly has an association with psychosis and sometimes bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder have psychosis as well. Not most instances, but sometimes. So this area where psychosis is present is really where we see the greatest risk. And if a substance use disorder is comorbid with schizophrenia, meaning schizophrenia and a substance use disorder occur at the same time, that increases the risk even more. When we think of violence and schizophrenia, really what comes to mind is suicide and suicidal behavior, like suicide attempts. We know that between 5 and 6% of individuals with schizophrenia will die by suicide. So there is a dangerousness component to schizophrenia, but not really necessarily a dramatic increase in the risk of violence. We need to work more to try to reduce suicidal behavior with this mental disorder and with schizoaffective disorder, which shares the same suicide risk. Myth number five is that schizophrenia is really just a fear of the government. And I've heard many different versions of this myth. And they all really revolve around schizophrenia being a mental disorder that involves paranoia. Sometimes they are worried that they're being spied on. And when we look at the themes of the delusions that occur with schizophrenia, a fear of the government, including a fear of the FBI or the CIA spying on them, is a popular theme. But there are many other types of presentations of schizophrenia that don't involve paranoia and, of course, don't involve a specific fear of the government. Someone can have a fear of the government and a fear of being spied on, and that can be completely unrelated to schizophrenia. Myth number six is that schizophrenia is caused by dysfunctional or abusive parents. And specifically, we see with this myth the idea that schizophrenia is caused by an overprotective or abusive mother. Now, this comes from an old term referred to as the schizophrenogenic mother, and that later expanded to the 
schizophrenogenic family. And this theory was really based on this idea that somehow a mother or a family could cause schizophrenia through certain behaviors. The term schizophrenogenic means to cause schizophrenia. Now, we've learned later on from research that there is no such thing as the schizophrenogenic mother or the schizophrenogenic family. There are environmental contributors to the development of schizophrenia, but parenting is not really a substantial contributor. Myth number seven is that schizoaffective disorder is a more severe version or type of schizophrenia. Now here I can understand why this myth persists. If we look at schizoaffective disorder, it has the features of schizophrenia plus major mood disturbances like mania or depression. So it kind of makes sense that we would think of schizoaffective as being more severe. But actually schizoaffective disorder is not more severe than schizophrenia. The prognosis for schizoaffective disorder is actually a little bit better than the prognosis for schizophrenia. Another interesting point when it comes to schizoaffective disorder is if somebody has schizophrenia, they can later be diagnosed instead with schizoaffective disorder if they meet the full criteria for schizoaffective disorder. And then later on, they could be diagnosed with schizophrenia again. So it's not like somebody would necessarily start out with a diagnosis of one of these two disorders and stay with that diagnosis throughout their lifetime. Myth number eight is that schizophrenia is caused through genetics only. Now we know there is a substantial genetic contribution to the development of schizophrenia. For example, if somebody has an identical twin who has schizophrenia, there's a 40 to 65% chance that that individual will develop schizophrenia themselves. But that leaves a lot of other possible causes to schizophrenia. We call these environmental causes, like stress and exposure to trauma and other different elements. So there is a genetic contribution that is strong to schizophrenia, but that's not all that causes this disorder. Myth number nine is that schizophrenia is not treatable. Now, there are various treatments available for schizophrenia, including talk therapy and medication, and usually we see talk therapy and medication combined when treating schizophrenia. And there's a lot of different research about what type of recovery pattern we could expect with schizophrenia. Overall, looking at a lot of the research, we know that about 25% of individuals with schizophrenia will experience significant improvement, and about 50% will experience mild to moderate improvement of their symptoms. Now that leaves 25% that really don't see much improvement at all, which is unfortunate, and we need to work harder in terms of research about schizophrenia to improve the treatments available. But still, that leaves 75% that do improve significantly or improve somewhat. So schizophrenia is treatable. There are some obstacles to treatment of schizophrenia, including a particular characteristic of schizophrenia that we see quite a bit called anosognosia, a lack of insight. This is when an individual who has schizophrenia doesn't realize that they have the disorder, and of course this can interfere with their motivation and their willingness to participate in treatment. So certainly there are some obstacles to an individual with schizophrenia being treated effectively, but there are a lot of treatments available, and generally they do tend to cause a reduction in symptom severity, duration, and frequency. So schizophrenia is a treatable mental disorder, and research continues to try to make these treatments more effective. I hope you found this description of nine myths about schizophrenia to be interesting. Thanks for watching.